And then uh, I I cringe a little at this question, but uh, there's a question about barrel racers and bits, and if more joints equals more bend, bits to lift a shoulder, straighten a shoulder, gag bits, and all of that good stuff. So I'm going to just take my headset off and walk away and let you know. <laughs> No. <laughs> go ahead go ahead uh, i knew this was going to come up okay so there is some so truly is, cringeworthy is, stuff out there yes sure. this i i might i might commit daniel dolphin horsemanship blasphemy here but i ride in two bits i've got two bits in my arsenal okay and i don't start in a traditional snapple and i brought my bit in so i could show you what i start Okay. Okay. So look at the mouthpiece. It looks like a straight, it looks like a curb bit, right? It looks like a basic curb bit, mole mouthpiece. And then I've got big rings for the cheek pieces. My, my bridle connects right here. My reins connect right at the corner of the mouth. And right here is like, if you want to add like a drop nose band to it. Okay. But the, this is the bit that I start everything in. And then if I'm going to continue to barrel race, I, I try to kind of stay in this bit. Now, the reason is, is because it's a keep it simple, stupid kind of situation. The more moving pieces we got, more opportunities there are for it to move and give mixed signals, right? I've been training. I learned in this bit. I, I learned back in, shoot, I want to say 2001, I think I was 21 years old. I learned how to train Colts in this bit and learned how to ride in this bit. And that's what my hands know. And that's how my hands are educated. And, and um, I'm, I'm decent in a snaffle. I'm not, I'm not as good as some of these other girls are in a snaffle by any a traditional snaffle by any means. Mm -hmm. um, I prefer the least amount of moving parts on the bit as possible to make as clear of a signal as possible. Cause let's face it. Even at a walk or a standstill, our hands aren't always great, right? You know, even the best hands aren't always great. And I like to think I've got really good hands, but there are times when it hits the fan and, and your hands are all over the place. And so if your hands are all over the place on a gag hat combo, what message are you sending that horse? Okay. And then the reason for the big ring on this, on this bit is because we've all seen the picture of the barrel horse that's turning the barrel and that bit is going through the damn mouth. And like, what kind of piece of equipment is that? I've also had a lot of, uh, um, I I've experienced this myself when I was riding in like a junior cow horse, dog bone, twisted wire, something or other, and turning, turning the barrel and that whole shank and cheek piece flip up over on its side. What kind of, what kind of, you know, direction are we giving then? Mm -hmm. And how bad are we pinching that horse's mouth? Um, so that is, that's what I start Colts in. And that's what I'll continue to ride my barrel horses in. And then if I need, if I need um, leverage, I go to a Monty Foreman super short shank cone curb bit. And that sounds big and whatever it, it sounds a little bit confusing but it's just a basic curb bit to for people i mean it's the same mouthpiece it's a short shank the the connectors for the uh, chin strap are as another ring so you have the the bridle connection as well as another ring for your for your curb chain that way you don't get any pinching and the lifting the shoulder the the stopping the bending the engaging the hind end, the holding the hind end from cross firing, all of that stuff comes from training in good hands and good body position and good balance on that horse. And it doesn't come from the bit. Mm -hmm. And and people are looking for that quick fix. They're looking for that bit that's going to make everything magical and, and fix everything. But if your horse can't hold its lead and cross fires through the turn, you know, just like you said that, you know, our starfish glitter is going to help your horse from cross firing through the turn. You know, if, if, if you can't keep your horse from cross firing through the turn, there's no bit that's going to keep it from cross firing through the turn. If your legs are out here, starfishing, you know, coming out of the turn, you're not supporting that horse's body with your legs. 
and you're not in the right position to help that horse in the turn. And that's the most frustrating thing to me when I see people not taking responsibility for their lack of horsemanship skills when they don't have a good run or they have a, a mess up or a knocked barrel there they and they don't understand that it's lack of balance lack of body control lack of physical fitness on their part and their horse's part because they won't take responsibility for their own health you know they think that it's all about giving their horse the latest greatest supplement but yet they eat like shit they drink red bull all the time they have horrible relationships they're surrounded by crappy people that are not supportive and, um, you know, they're on to the next guy every couple of weeks or whatever, you know, and, 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 you know, they have no physical fitness, they don't have any core strength, and they're not willing to do the discipline that it takes that's required. We expect so much out of our horses. And this goes for Colts too, two year old Colts. We expect so much out of those horses. We, they deserve us to have discipline in ourselves and 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 work to support them in our horsemanship and our level of education as well as theirs and there isn't any bit on the market that's going to change your eating habits you know because it all works together it's all together the the things that you think every day the things that you write down the relationships that you talk to um, the people you talk to, the quality of the equipment that you're using, um, the circle you run in, it all matters. And, and, you know, what you're listening to, what you're putting in your head, it all matters. And then you all, and then on top of that, you have horsemanship and keeping your horse healthy, taking your horse to the chiropractor, having a damn good shoer that's doing a good job on your horse's feet for you. You know, that's all part of it too. But if you can't get the correct freaking diagonal when you're post trotting in the arena, I wouldn't expect the bit to lift that shoulder up when you're turning the second barrel and you're going to hit it. So. All right. <laughs> is that, that was, is that what you expected? That was fun <laughs> to watch. No, I have to say, I, <laughs> I, I feel like you just had a little cathartic moment. And so that's good for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and the bit that you're, you're starting with for those that can't see, uh, it, it was, uh, just a ported solid mouthpiece, what would be in a, a typical like uh grazing bit or, or something like that. And the only thing I would say about that is that's going to tend to not be a super lateral mouthpiece, but it right. will have yep. tongue relief. Yep. Uh, and you're, you're saying you're taking your colts, you start them in a round pin, you leave and you're doing big straight lines and two mile pastures and stuff like that. You know, that you're not bending them around a whole lot and tons of little bitty circles uh you also had brought up your emergency stop which i guess would be a good thing to get into yeah right bet. now so um so i i wouldn't have any trouble riding that bit myself you know um i, I would say that that would probably be something a novice might have some trouble with because it's not going to help them on the lateral but once you understand the lateral and you can help the horse out then 30 minutes later that's going to be the same thing as anything else right so okay why, why don't we get into your emergency stop <laughs> 